couple more minutes. Who's going to start? I was going to play, and then you were going to you were going to talk. Right. Okay. So. Got hecklers, so it'll be get interesting. Well, Harry was a good choice on power Good. Yeah, that's right. That, that works better. Yeah, it's much better. We are gonna hey, Letty. do this stuff we always do. Hi, Letty. Hi, David. I hear we have some uh, overheads or whatever we used. What, what, don't we call, remember what, what those old machines that you had to put the little clear plastic things on? What were those called? Oh, no, not maybe. Projectors. What was it? Overhead projectors, overhead right? Projectors. Teachers know those things. We have some. That's that's where that's you know I'm old enough to think of that's how you put things up on the wall. That was my first job. Doing overhead projecting, was it? Was that your first job? That thing. Let's do that. Okay. This is how uh, a, a whole bunch of uh, the opportunities of getting together either started or ended in uh, Mumbai. So let's, let's kind of start the, the evening just experiencing what we used to do there a lot. Get it, get it, 
begin with a prayer and a very brief meditation. Heavenly Father, Heavenly Father Divine, Mother, Divine Mother, Dearest Friend, Beloved God, Dearest Friend, Beloved God, Lord Jesus Christ, Lord Jesus Christ, Babaji Krishna, Babaji Krishna, Lahiri Mahashaya, Lahiri Mahashaya, Swami Shri Teshwar, Swami Shri Teshwar, Beloved Guru, Beloved Guru, Paramahansa Yogananda, Paramahansa Yogananda, Saints of all religions, Saints of all religions, Friend and Guide, Friend and Guide, Swami Kriyananda, Swami Kriyananda, Bless us as your instruments, Bless us as your instruments. Help us to open our hearts. Help us to open our hearts. Our minds. Our minds. And our lives. And our lives. To say yes to your call. To say yes to your call. Help us to serve others in your name. Help us to serve others in your name. In your vibration. In your vibration. Of divine love. Of divine love. Divine joy. Divine joy. And divine wisdom. And divine wisdom. We are your children. We are your children. Dedicated to you. Dedicated to and you. To sharing you with all. To sharing you with all. Om. Om. Just meditate for a few minutes.
Om Shanti. Amen. <clears throat> Hello, friends. So nice to see you all. And welcome to anyone out there in live streaming land. Viraj and I arm wrestled a little bit, and I either won or lost, depending on one's perspective. He wanted me to go first, so uh, <laughs> I will. Um, it was, I'm going to tell you what the evening is, because especially for those online, we've now been in the land of Mumbai, where WhatsApp and 10-second shots and 5-second shots, and everything moves very fast, so I'll tell you what is in for the evening, so if you have to go and start five new companies, you know, in between one break <laughs> and the next, then, uh, you know, you know what you can do. So we're going to, I'm going to just talk a little overview. Viraj is going to share some uh, anecdotes and thoughts. We're going to have some Q&A time, so if you have a question, you know, we have a space where we can answer uh, whatever we can of your questions. And then, um, since it's my birthday, I get to read a Whispers. That was, I was either going to give chocolate or read a Whispers, but I love this Whispers, so I Even know more people. Than chocolate? I do, actually, and that's saying wow. a lot. So, uh, anyhow, so we'll end with that and also with just, you know, all of us joining together and praying for Master's work in Mumbai and India and anywhere it's happening. So. Um, to say of being in, you know, it's, it's not that different anywhere you go at Ananda. You close your eyes, you meditate, there you are. You open your eyes, there are Guru Bhais doing the same thing, and their eyes are brighter, and they have on saris, or they have on this or that, or they look different, but it's all the same in a way. But I will talk a little particularly about the blessings I feel that's happening right now in Mumbai because that's where we were drawn to go and where we've been. And it reminds me of some of the most important parts of what Ananda is, uh, what I grew up in as Ananda, what you know, Swamiji shared with us about Ananda. Um, and there are qualities happening there in such a big way, and they're happening wherever there are devotees sincerely opening their hearts and being channels of God, wonderful things are happening. Many places in India, it's happening. But our little window was on Narayanin Shurjo's uh, work there in Mumbai. And in terms of years, for them, it's a newish work. They've just been there a couple years, three, four, four years. Counting, um, counting two and a half with COVID. So they landed. There were some seasoned devotees and Guru Bhais who lived in Mumbai who had been getting visits from people, Diana, uh, monks, Sagar, lots of people had come and prompt them and taken them through the steps so they could get Kriya. So they were happily moving along. Rani and Shurjo landed and opened a center where everyone could get together in the city. Well, that was going like gangbusters. Asha and many of us visited them there to see that at their eight-hour meditation, they had two rooms of 100 people each. They had to do two of them. So that was two days in a row. Two days in a row, because they couldn't fit them all in their space. So deep eight-hour meditators for two days of mostly different groups. Um, so that was interesting to us. That we, was four years ago. Four right? years ago. So that was how it started for our relationship with them, to see them in this new work. and. Um, thinking, gosh, uh, these guys are working really, really hard. They're, you know, I lived and worked in Silicon Valley for a while enough to see the culture of startups, you know, the startup culture where people are young and they work all the time and sometimes they put their uh, mattresses underneath the <laughs> desk and then this is the way, you know, because it all has to happen. Um, and these guys were kind of on that track a bit with just always. So we thought, how can we help them? So we thought, let's give them a break. Let's take them away. You know, we were able to take them away for a few days for a break. And as we got to visit with them just as friends, we could see 
you know, they were on this amazing trajectory. They have totally dedicated themselves to master. They are young, they are creative. We know people like that in our own congregation and around and on, around the world. Um, they have the great good karma of having lived with Swamiji and imbibed, you know, the fact that they were there with Swamiji to me indicates that there was already some very serious attunement going on from the past. And they uh, attuned themselves to his every nuance while they were in that particular position of, of just caring for him in the last four years of his life. Um, so there's an amazing uh, love, attunement, and ability to channel what Swamiji how he did Ananda, is how I would say it. Uh, a lot of creativity, a lot of joy, a lot of love for the people around. Um, it's a family feeling there, definitely a, a bonded group. It wasn't that long after they'd been in town that COVID came along and said, you know, closed doors. They lasted as long as they could. So they said, well, what can we do now? So they went out onto this place outside of Mumbai. It's called an island. It has a little bit of water you cross to get there. And uh, so they got, they have attracted some very high energy magnetic people who know how to do things in the world. And before you knew it, these people had gotten together uh, and bought a couple of villas or rented a couple of villas where Narni and Churjo could live and also there could be an ashram with some rooms where, where devotees can stay and visit for the sake of getting out of the amazing throng that is humanity living in Mumbai and have a little break where it's a little quieter, a little greener. Um, so people would come out and stay overnight and still do. So then form the community sort of right away. It wasn't like they said, lo, we will now form a community. It's like, lo, there were people there who wanted to move <laughs> in and live. And they were, of course, going to serve them. And they were all in lockdown, basically, together. So uh, morning sadhanas and you know a cook to do the meals and programs. Online was the word everywhere at Ananda. So they did a lot of. Many of you have seen very dynamic programs online. So uh, fast forward a little bit more, uh, COVID stopped. They realized while they were there in that house, uh, ashram house where people could come and visit in the temple and, and go to programs, those people would have to travel for an hour and a half to two hours from various places in Mumbai. Traffic in Mumbai is interesting. It's very congested, and so you wait, and you're in what is not the most, uh, understatedly put, not the most sattvic environment to just wait for inching forward and uh, getting across the jetty, which is the source of many jokes. Um, but they did it. They just would travel. They would fight the traffic after the end of their day or at the end of their week and come to be together because they felt what happens, what we all know when we get together and meditate and do programs and chant and sing and focus uh, with that group magnetism with dynamic leaders, uh, they would come and they did for two years or so. At least a year, and maybe a year and a half now. A year and a half. So, so then the thought was, okay, COVID's finished and we have all these seized decree bonds out there who lost their center because we had to close it. It's awfully far for them to travel, so let's see what we can do to serve them where they are. So then the Worley Center has now opened to do that, and it's just been a grand, you know, appreciated, beautiful, it's a great space if you haven't seen it yet. That's back in more the center of Mumbai. More the center where a lot of devotees live uh, close to the center. So that's now going on, so meanwhile, because, um, because they're <laughs> Swami's children, what else can I say? So Swami had businesses, was their point of view, so devotees could work together, learn to serve, learn how to bring yoga into daily life. Hmm, let's open a cafe. 
Now, some of those seeds might have been put in the ether by a certain David Praver many, many years ago, <laughs> where you would have a cafe and a bookstore. Well, they started a cafe, and they have books, some of the basic ones, so how to meditate, the ones that new people would want. And beautifully done, very sattvic, many people coming, and Swami's music playing all the time is one of the interesting parts about that particular spot. And the inspiration behind that was um, Narayani had a very serious ailment, and Swami said, don't worry about it. Go back, get your treatments, serious stuff. Listen to my music all the time. Just keep it on. Whatever you're doing, wherever you are, just listen to my music. So she followed that earnestly and with great devotion. And uh, she was healed in ways that doctors would not believe. So anyway, she has a very close connection with the music, which is um, one of the assignments we had, bringing us up to common when we said, can we come and help you? <laughs> and they said, sure, you can come. Uh, we'd love your help. Uh, why don't you come? And we thought, you know, we'll do some programs together. Maybe once in a while we'll kind of cover a base here while they're covering a base there because now they have the ashram community, 23 three residents living there, you know, learning. Still pretty new, not the older Kriyabans at the time. And they've got the other things. So they've got, they're juggling a lot of, plates, so let's see if we can't help them carry a plate or two. So we landed, and, uh, and they said, Whew, boy, thank goodness you're here. We are really ready for a break. So we're going to go. <laughs> we're going to go now. And we kind of went, oh, you mean, uh, you mean like, like for a couple days, you know, so in our hearts. But we, we, we said yes to coming and helping them. We felt an inner call, actually. It was more than just a good idea certainly for me and mm -hmm. Biraj too. So we, we said yes, and they went away right before Christmas. So but we got there for the all-day meditation, and before New Year's, they were gone. Yeah. <laughs> so they were gone Christmas Day, and so it was, the, it was like, the way that India can work is that things can get bogged and bogged, and it doesn't go, and you're stuck in traffic, and it doesn't seem like it's possible, and then all of a sudden, something whips at the 11th hour, and by 12 o'clock it's done, and you just don't exactly know how it all happened. Well, that's how Christmas happened. We, <laughs> you know, we sort of, let's see, what would Asha do? We'd get costumes, anybody got some saris? You know, we were just like. We were, we were trying to do Ananda Palo Alto Christmas. Uh, you no, know, in a little teeny way with the shepherds and Mary and the baby, and so it was a family Christmas, really, and. Uh, we got in a little trouble because we, uh, we were just so happy Actually, that... Actually, they were gone before Christmas. Christmas, yeah, that's they right. Gone. They were. So uh, I they, think our we first... We had to carry on Christmas. ...online um, debut was us having a home-style Christmas. Okay, <laughs> everybody sing along the campfire, and we've got the baby. The baby, you're going to love this. How do we get the baby? How do we, Asha got the baby in Italy, but, you know, that's not possible. Where can we get the baby? Oh. Let's try Amazon. <laughs> so we had perhaps the first Ananda baby Jesus that came from Amazon. I mean, of course Jesus lived in the Amazon, but you know, he got delivered and, and you know, it was like whip, 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 you know, the next day Jesus is there. So we were having a lovely time with these 23 people just, you know, hooting and, and joy and love. And, and we're thinking, sure, sure, you know, you can sing the music, right? It, we'd had about six days to prepare a choir that had never been there before. Yeah. <laughs> so this is where we had our first sort of differences of uh, trajectories here. We were just having a blast, and uh, we didn't have a lot of training. We didn't really know what was expected, so we just thought, we'll give it our best. So we did, and lo and behold, they've got this huge energy around the Instagram presence and the this presence and the that presence and the everybody, you know, has to be like, oh, okay, perfect presence. And we weren't really aware <laughs> of that. So we were just home time Christmas and we had a blast, but it was a little bit shocking to some of the uh, <clears throat> Instagram official committee people. <laughs> It kind of like, oh my gosh, what have they done? You know, Swami's music is, look at that. You know, that's not Swami's music. Anyway, so that was kind of an interesting part. We learned 
we learned to not do things when it was going to be Instagrammable, and you know, we learned to, you know, practice a lot more. And, uh, <laughs> actually, but, have our our main lead soprano actually present during the performance. Yeah, yeah, the soprano we all leaned on got a little, and, and it just wasn't quite a, a night for her. So it uh, it had some moments. I remember looking around the room, and everybody was with us. They didn't know the difference, you know? It was just fun. <laughs> Music, Christ, Jesus, these people are happy, and we're happy, and we're all together. And then I'm la, 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 and I looked over at uh, one of our Instagram specialists who watches everything and makes sure everything is good, and I saw her face, you know, with this <laughs> look of, oh, my gosh, what are we putting up? No. Just no, Christmas songs. Just I mean, to... some of Master's and Swami's Christmas songs. It wasn't a big deal, but it was not up to snuff. Our singing was poor. It's true. It's true. But the spirit was good. So everybody knew the spirit was good. So we went on from there, and then uh, we had many, many programs, and they were gone for Three weeks, weeks then. Three I weeks think. then. We just kept saying yes. Uh, five or six days. Or actually a little fewer. Maybe, it was maybe four, four days. days yeah. It was four days. Um, I mean, we'd visited there before, so we knew, you know, we knew where the ashram was. <laughs> and, uh, and, you know, we, we knew them, and we, you know, we both knew Swami, so hey, what the heck, you know, we'll just give it a try here. And, and so with some early bumbles, we you know, got a little better, and, uh, and we just kept saying yes. And then what they wanted us to do, they felt, we really want Master's music, Swami's music, Ananda music, to be a part of things because it's such an attunement device as we've all found. If you can sing the music, even if you don't sing it well, if you can sing along with it, if you can listen to it a lot, if you can tune into it, there's a lot to be gained. As we remember, Swami said, if you want to know me, listen to my music. So our assignment was share about Swami, you know, any stories, any glimpses, any things you want, and help them with the music. I go here because obviously that's Viraj's forte. And um, what's the other assignment? Oh, yes. Uh, help people get a sense of, you know, here we have the luxury, most of us have been to Ananda Village, you know, a number of times. And we were, when we were in our first years of Ananda, we could say, you know, well, Let's see other places. And they, you could go to the village and see a lot of devotees living together. And this is what it looks like when it's been around for a while. And here are these sparkling devotees who started when, and now they're still here. And look how bright they are. And we can get that. And they're, um, they don't have that yet much. So, uh, so our job was to help them see some of the history of Ananda and so we did that through uh, some of Swami's videos, some of the videos that have been made, you know, short ones. We learned the beauty of brevity, <laughs> very important uh, there. So 10-minute, um, so 8-minute, maximum 12-minute clips during what we offered, which was like a sadhaka sort of training, because these people in the ashram are like that. They've dedicated, they're there, they're Kriya Bonds for a while. They've shown their sincerity and their devotion and their hearts are open and they are um, spiritually receiving uh, at that wonderful stage, you know, the sponge stage where you just drink it in and it's all joyful. And um, We basically so did a 20-segment a 20, a 20 series much like the Sadaka prep that we, or Sadaka training that we do here. Yeah, much like it with more um, little video clips and... You know, we tweaked it a little bit, but we called it um, dynamic... Ananda Community Living. Dynamic An Ananda Community Living, something like that. And so the, the group, the ashram group would meet once a week and talk about things and tune in. And then meanwhile, we'd be having the sadhanas and the music program on Tuesday and the Sunday satsangs. So um, a lot of wonderful spiritual sharing, and that might be, maybe... You can do a little more if you want. A little more. Um, other qualities I would say about 
Indian devotees. You know, I've been coming back and forth. We lived in India for a while. And so it gave me a moment to see how does it feel there and how does it feel here when you're, you know, a new person is coming saying, teach me how to meditate. I want to learn how to meditate. And what we found with the Indian devotee is, you think about it, a little thinking would suffice. This is their culture. They came up with it. It's the Indian saints and sages of the Himalayas. You know, Babaji's been <laughs> vibrating in that in that country, particularly um, for who knows how long. And so they come to it with an appreciation and already an understanding about how important the guru is in your life. So their, their receptivity level, they don't have the veil mostly of the mind, uh, the way a Silicon Valley person coming who doesn't know anything about gurus, you know, it's just a couple of layers. You have to work with them to get to where they, they can relax all that. But with, uh, with the Indian devotee, often they just don't have that. So you sit down, they say, okay, now we will, we will guide you through a Hongsa practice. And you know, we, we sit there to guide somebody and you're always like once in a while, a little wink of the eye to make sure you know, people haven't started the hung, hung snore <laughs> technique or you know, just barely holding themselves awake you want to kind of just give it long enough that they're still in joy. And so often with Western audiences, two, three, four, five minutes, it depends on where you are in the setting and where they are. But, you know, five minutes is considered a pretty big victory. Of, for the brand new students. For the brand new yeah. students who just learned. But in India, once you learn mostly they know how to sit still. And they just go, okay, now I'm sitting still. And now I'm doing the technique. And now I'm calm. And now I'm, I can just sit here for a long time and do this technique. So um, it's changing now from when we were there before a little bit. Mumbai is a very busy place. There's a lot of action going on in many ways. But the undercurrent, as Swami used to say, in the soil of India, there are these blessings of the tradition of yoga, unbroken. And it doesn't, it, it's easier to access those vibrations and that consciousness uh, when you're there, in, in my sense of it. Uh, so we've made new friends. I'm gonna wrap up my little section for now and turn it to Biraj. So there are wonderful, dear, dear souls living on this mud island ashram bubble. There are wonderful Kriyaban, high energy, uh, great moving and shaking and, and seva oriented souls as well living in Worli. And there are people working in the cafe. And if you want to have an experience of some of the early it's not even early, it's not comparing it to the past because it's now and it's new, but it's small enough that you can have a part in it, uh, you can help, and it's one of the things I appreciate. I've lived in a large center, I've lived in Palo Alto for a long time, and there's so many great souls, so many great teachers, and you help when you can, you know you do what you can, but there, they don't have very much. So they really appreciate whatever you can share with them. And the divine friendship of Guru Bhais is something they, they don't have that much of yet. It's just starting. So it means a lot to them when people can come and be a part of it. So of course, it's a small work. It needs coordination for the timing. If you are feeling divinely inspired to go and, and jump into something there, um, I would heartily recommend for the attunement, for the joy of it, for uh, being part of something that it feels so in tune with how Swami was. In my limited view, I spent some time around Swami and his consciousness, they have opened themselves to be unconditional channels and there's a lot of blessings flowing through them, a lot of joy, a lot of grace. 
a lot of creativity. And, um, you know, the future of our work at Ananda is in the hands of those whose bodies are a little bit younger than some of ours. And it, it just fills my heart with great, um, it's thrilling and great appreciation. And I feel, I feel Swamiji must be so happy to see groups like this going on with mostly younger people um, taking their first steps, but doing it with such sincere joy and love and caring for one another. It's really a divine family. The way I hear stories about when First Ananda started, it was in a small group. They all were very much one group. And uh, there's a beauty in small, and I think this work now is at that stage where the little Mumbai bubble is still small enough that that amazing beauty and it's expanding. So um, just to, just to uh, kind of leapfrog on that, um, two of the students that we had in this Sadika training like uh, group that would meet every Thursday night while we were there, um, uh, as we left, uh, it was kind of Sergio Narani and us doing much of the classes and and uh, satsangs and things. And as we left, the, within a week afterwards, two of the uh, students of that group just started stepping up like crazy and sending out uh, WhatsApp texts and organizing events and kirtans. And, and it's just like, whoa. You know, it's like sometimes when somebody who's been doing things steps aside, all of a sudden people kind of come up from the grassroots and say, in fact, I had a conversation with one of, the, one of these two guys uh, the week before we left, and, and it was actually the last class of this Thursday night uh, community living uh, encouraging, encouragement that we, that we uh, did regularly. And uh, uh, they were kind of saying goodbye to us, and, uh, and it was very sweet. And uh, at, at one point, we were just kind of schmoozing, I guess, afterwards, and one of them says, well, what are we going to do without you? And then he answered the question himself by saying, I guess we're just going to have to step up, huh? And it was, it was really true that, that that's exactly what was happening, that when, when the people who had been doing a lot of the work stepped aside, people just said, I guess we better do it. And they have been. It's been really exciting to watch. Uh, another aspect of that is these two guys are an example, the two guys I'm thinking of, are an example of we are the, the, the work there in, in, in Mud Island. I don't really know what M-A-H-D means. D -H. Are there any Indians D -H. here? Mud. No? OK. Um, I never asked what it means. It doesn't actually mean the stuff that's sticky and brown. But there's a lot of that around, too. But anyway, up in Mud Island um, at the ashram, we were literally surrounded, I mean, Literally, you could see Bollywood all around you. I mean, where there wasn't sea, there were, there were uh, 180 degree of sea, the Arabian Sea, out, uh, out on one set of windows. But the other set of windows, it was 180 degrees of Bollywood movie sets. And uh, I would say, am I exaggerating to say there were eight or nine people involved in the movie industry that were active members of our congregation? Close to that. Six and some other models okay. and things. Okay. All right. Well, these two guys were among those. Uh, each of them were writers, active writers, with lots of scripts being worked on simultaneously for various movie projects. And one of them was actually a director uh, of movies. Two of our other uh, congregation members were uh, actors and producers and. Well, I guess he was actually a scriptwriter too. I'm not sure, but anyway, uh, the the, the Olly, Bollywood was literally around us. You could see uh, places every every night. We'd look out our bedroom window and say, "What are they building today on that new set?" Because it was just an open field that was n very visible from our bedroom window, and every day there'd be a new something that was going up, and then six or seven days later. It would just come down immediately and be, be this bare piece of uh, field again because the movie, they had shot their, their shots and they had to deconstruct whatever they had put up real quickly. Can I say one thing about of course. the movies before? 
One of the things that's most, you know, you just watch Master move through the instruments that come. And several of the people are working on scripts. There's one couple working on a divine romance script, a second part of it. So they can bring the teachings into the movie industry. So they can get master's teachings in there. So, and it's transforming their lives, which is wonderful to see because before, uh, before they were devotees and they had Ananda, they were doing what was selling, which were horror movies. Vampire and, movies. And, uh, that was very popular, so someone was sort of stuck with everybody wanted them to make a, a, va a new vampire movie. And some heroes, which was a brighter point, but still, you know, action, violence, you know, all of that was what sold. So that's where they were. But now devotees are getting together to do movies that are more sattvic and have a vehicle for the teaching so people can learn um, about to be encouraged to meditate, to be encouraged to live well, and you know the higher parts of uh, the last day we were there. Spectrum. One of these two guys that I was describing uh, from our from our Thursday night group uh, gave what he called a narration. I, wasn't that the word he used um, of uh, two of the six parts of a kind of a uh, series that he, that he was uh, he'd written about half of the series of the th six series. And every, every night was going to be about a different saint. And he, he described Babaji, he described Yogananda, of course, Lahiri, Ananda Moy Ma, um, the guy up in the foothills that people are starting to, to visit, uh, Neem Kroli Baba, and uh, somebody else, I don't remember who the last one was. But, and, and he spent about, it was each one, about a half hour describing each of these first two stories that he had been writing. And he, he, was, he was kind of trying out the storyline with us and Sergio Narayani, all four of us were in the living room with him. And it was obviously very important for him to, to be able to tell this story. And he was essentially practicing because in the next couple of days he was gonna to have to do that same thing to pitch the story to the producers who were gonna produce, give the, move, the money for it. So it was like, we were really watching these films start to come together right in front of us. It was great fun, great fun. I never thought I'd be part of Bollywood. I always thought those three and a half hour movies with all those dance scenes were a little silly, but, but there we were in the middle of it. Our joke is that any of you who know Indian movies, Amitabh Bakan is still in the game at 80 something, you know, doing a lot of uh, commercials and such. And so we say, you know, when he's ready to step aside, maybe Biraj will have his moment <laughs> where, you know, he can uh, be a, in the good or coal or something. Um, one of the things that, uh, you, if you were, were happened to be re reading any of those newsletters that I sent back monthly, uh, one of the things that was fun or, or adventurous or uh, looked at f from another perspective, sort of annoying, uh, living out at the ashram on Mud Island is you had to get over to the mainland uh, where the, the city was. And uh, it, it was the hardest actually back in August when, when the monsoon was still going, because we visited in August too. And uh, Lahari didn't make the trip all that often because uh, it, for one thing, it often smelled of, of drying fish, which there's a lot of uh, uh, f fishery activity all around us there. And uh, it would, in the monsoon, there was 170 oh, yards maybe of muddy <laughs> stuff to have to walk through. And sometimes there were parts of fishes in the mud uh, just because of what the prevailing industry was in that area. So, and, and then even when you got, you, you got across the water, you used the ferry, you, you, you walked across the, the fishy, muddy area, and then you got into where all the vendors were. And luckily, they aren't aggressive. There was no, oh, will you buy this for me? Will you? That just didn't happen. But they were there along the, along the way. It was very crowded, uh, uh, kind of on both sides of the street. With kind of, there wasn't much room to get, get through. You kind of felt like, wow, this is the kind of the the business aspect of of India kind of was pressing uh, psychically at least on uh, on each side of us. And Lahari decided that wasn't her favorite journey, so she didn't do that nearly as much, especially in during the monsoon. But but when when it was dry, because it was very dry, the six months we were there uh, from December, um, 
you did it much more, and you, you got your courage up. Even I sort of enjoyed some of those, what they call auto rides. But an auto in Mumbai is not a car. It's these little tuk tuks, these little uh, rickshaws. But uh, Motorized, um, yeah. they call them autos for some reason. And uh, well, it was, a, even it was a place where, you know, Biraj is a great world traveler. He, he loves different uh, ethnic cultures and being in the midst of it. And he, so I would say, OK, Sweden, now you go have your National Geographic adventure. <laughs> and you know, I'll stay home and work on the computer or do this, that, or anything else. Um, Swami said something about India that I, I latched upon somehow, and it helped me feel a little more uh, OK about where I was. He said, you know, India is a great nation, and it's coming up. It's taking its place materially. It's going to be you know, the spiritual. The West and India are coming together. We're seeing it. Um, it's just going to be a great union of the great spiritual depth that they have and the material efficiency of the West. It's coming together in that beautiful image. And, uh, but, you know, meanwhile, he said in India, but there's a lot of this nonsense. He kind of just did this. And you sort of kind of know what he meant. About you know, India. It's the, you know, it's the dirt. It's the tamas. It's the dirt. Did I say dirt? Anyway, um, <laughs> there's, you know, it's different that way on the physical plane. But, um, yeah, so one stretches as far as one can, and uh, Mr. Mm -hmm. Geographic uh, likes it more, so he does more. <laughs> One of the things that I learned to love, we both did actually, it was only a four minute walk from where we lived, which was a very modern 36 story uh, apartment com uh, complex. And, uh, uh, and that's where the whole community, Ananda community lived, in tall apartment complexes overlooking the little house that we called the villa uh, that, that was the ashram, the center of the ashram. But the, the residents of the ashram were just all surrounding and looking down over the little building that we all gathered in. Um, but our, one of our favorite things about the six months was walking from our, our apartment building, the four minutes to the ashram, and just dis discovering what India had on the streets. This was, not, this was not the city part of Mumbai. This was Mud Island. It was, it's, more, it's more spread out. It's more nature. And what you had on the streets was a whole bunch of probably 25 um, stray dogs. And the stray dogs just, they don't have a home, they don't go indoors at night, but they just, they weren't, they didn't act like wild packs of, of beasts. They were merely, they were more like deer uh, that you see at Ananda village, for instance. They were just so sweet. And they'd all been uh, residents of the, uh, the community, the, the larger Indian community that we were part of, um, had taken it upon themselves any time a dog kind of took up residence, uh, even though not owned by a human, they would be sure that they got spayed or neutered. And uh, they also made sure that they got fed. Uh, there, there was somebody that would come every night and feed all the dogs throughout the, and I, I don't know how that all got funded, but an NGO of some kind. And, uh, but we would have favorites uh, among these 25 dogs that we, we would encounter between the, the apartment complex and the ashram. And uh, there was one who was definitely in charge. You could tell he was the, the top dog. Um, but he didn't have to, uh, he didn't seem to have to uh, assert his priority all that often. You know, one or two big, deep marks a day seemed to be enough to just kind of, everyone else realized, okay, he's in charge. What was his name, do you remember? Uh, three weeks, and I'm already starting to Charlie. forget the name. Charlie, that was Charlie. And then there was a, a favorite of mine that was, um, uh, uh, we, had, we had named him Princess when we first arrived, but he ended up being a boy. I just wasn't very biologically accurate. And uh, so we had to rename him. But then somebody told us that, that oh, they call him uh, Langu. And Longu, we were, we were told sometime later, that just means limpy, because he had a bad paw. And so we were basically saying hi to Limpy every, every morning on our way by. Another one I called Blaze for the longest time, but then somebody else told us, I don't remember what, what just the last few days we found out, oh no, the, the, the larger community had another name for him. But these were our friends that we greeted every morning on the way to the ashram. It was great fun.
Very fun. Yeah. Uh, there was one full-time resident that stayed in one of the three bedrooms of the ashram. The other two bedrooms in this villa, which was really just a regular-sized house, um, uh, were left for guests who would come for a night or two or three. Uh, and we had a number of those all, all throughout the, the time. Um, but yeah, the rest of us used the building for breakfasts, for lunches, for morning sadhana, and for evening classes. So it had 20, 25 people in it much of the time, but only one person actually lived in uh, full time. Yeah. The rest of us lived in those big high rises. So it was a very modern existence, but we'd go and have Indian breakfast and Indian lunch. And that's, that was a little bit of a, of a point of contention for me. I got used to the Indian breakfasts. There are two very, very, very lovely uh, meals that they serve all the time for breakfast, and I got used to those. Lunch, I never quite got used to. But that had been true the eight years we were there in the aughts, too, that um, I'm just not a big fan of regular Indian food. So, uh, so we would, the huh? what was the breakfast? Yeah. One was called upma, and one was called poha. Poha happens to be rice that looks like it's been ironed flat. <laughs> and the, 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 the other one, upma, was kind of like cream of wheat, clumpier. And those, those were good, those were good, but anyway. I'm getting close, yeah. Let me see if there are a few more things I want to just uh, share in a fun way. Uh, one of my most fun things was those breakfasts. The breakfast time uh, after sadhana. <laughs> yeah, you're right. Nice. Uh, I, I, don't, I know why you're laughing. Just like here, that's why he's laughing. Yeah, I mean, I, I like to go out with friends for breakfasts and, and coffees. But uh, that was really, in many ways, that was the heart of my ministry, was just being with people over the, those two meals. And breakfast was the most fun time for me. And we'd often have six, eight, sometimes 12 people gathered around two, three, or four tables. We'd just set up whatever we needed for that day. And we'd just chat, and we'd just smooth. And it was true you know, um, genuine satsang of just sitting with other truth seekers who are trying to learn how to live the yogic lifestyle. And it was great fun and great, very meaningful to me. Um, I think as much teaching in a very informal way happened there as did on at Sunday satsangs, which were wonderful and very inspiring. But it just, you know, one was uh, uh, more passive and just listening, whereas the other was dynamic and, and you know, uh, how, how do you deal with this very natural human thing that happens three days a week uh, in our lives? And it was just a lovely way to share with people. And uh, people really used it. The people in the ashram really came and uh, made use of those times, especially uh, when, you know, people like Asha and Uma from Assisi and various people would come through. Anand and Kirtani. Anand and Kirtani. We had a lot of visitors over the, over the six months. And when somebody like that came, those, those breakfasts became not only one ring around the table, but often a second ring outside the first ring because they were very popular just to be with longtime devotees of Ananda. People were very interested and very curious and very much wanting to feel the vibration of what living this life in a long-term permanent way really meant. Because you know, everyone in the ashram was maybe four years on the work, many of them just two or, or even one. And so it was, they were hungry for models of what does this mean? What is this like to really um, embrace uh, in a very practical daily w way these teachings? So let's, let's pull out, how do we pull out, the, there it is. If, you, if there's something about the work in India or anything that Sergio and Narayani are doing or that you've been curious about that we might be able to share about, let, let's give a, a few minutes to whatever comes up with you guys. We got, got somebody in the front row, my buddy. Who wants breakfast? <laughs> <laughs> That's true. <laughs> um, I was just wondering more about the music and what it was that you were doing there. I know you wrote some in your blogs, but um, what exactly were you focusing on and uh, how far did it get? And uh -huh. 
Uh, there were probably th maybe three main aspects. One was choir. Uh, we, uh, Barra Barricchio, I don't know his last name, from, originally from South America, be, had been there at the ashram for four to six months before us, maybe even longer, maybe nine months. And he had been doing some choir work. And then the, he left, and he moved to Chandigarh. Mm. And uh, so there'd been a gap of three or four months. And he had mostly done one or two parts singing uh, with the group. Uh, and, uh, and when we got there, there'd been a long gap, and people had remembered a few things from when they were singing before. But we tried to just get them motivated to, to learn more. So we got about, I don't know, maybe maybe 15, maybe even 18 songs under their belt. But we never had, a, almost never had a four-part uh, choir. We mostly had uh, soprano, bass. Yeah, we mostly had soprano and bass uh, because we had at least two basses most, most of the time. And uh, sometimes we had three. But uh, we, we, we had some tenors occasionally, but it was usually only one. And we had an alto for the first two months, but she wasn't very, it wasn't easy for her to learn, learn the, the new parts of the alto uh, section. And she was all alone. And I'd be singing with her, trying to teach her the alto part. And that, that, was, that was not easy. We, we, we learned that this kind of thing, showing you know, how much more do you have to go up or down, uh, helped for a, a good chunk of the people in that choir. Actually, that was a useful uh, step for them. But anyway, so we did a lot of choir work. Weekly, we had a, two, two times a week we had rehearsals, um, and let's see, we did um, we did a lot of chanting. You know, uh, many of you probably have seen Sergio's uh, one hour one chant experiment that he, that they did for oh I don't know six months worth of so. and every 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 week was a new chant that they pulled out and did for one whole hour, never changing chants. And that was that was fun. To, well, I never could pull it off. It was it was too. I didn't have enough energy to chant the same chant for, for one hour, so I couldn't do it when they were gone. Uh, we tried with, a few of us tried to pull it off two or three times, but I, so we had to go to different things. And the, the other thing that we did, especially when, when the, the one chant, uh, one hour thing wasn't able to be pulled off, is uh, Lahari and I would do evenings of what, what, what did the early songs that Swami wrote uh, as, uh, uh, not chants, but the actual songs. What, what were they about? What were they like? What, what, what can we learn about the uh, Ananda history and Ananda uh, qualities, Ananda attitudes from those early chants? And so that, we did that weekly for many, many weeks. So those were the three main things. The sing-alongs. Oh, we did sing-alongs uh, other, at other times, just, just melody singing. And uh, they liked that a lot. Yeah. So, yeah. Any, what other questions come to mind about... The, what's going on in India with the work, with Master's work? Anything at all? So are they doing a, a Sunday satsang at Mod as well as Worli now? That was really, that was a, probably as much as anything our, our primary role for, for being invited over, is they, they were about to start this new center in, in the center of Mumbai, in the downtown Mumbai, and they were going to be not available to the ashramites, the 23 people, the residents in the ashram, so they asked us to come, can you do, can you keep ash, the energy going in the ashram on Sundays and the weekend while, while Sergio and Narayani were down in the center of Mumbai, which was... Uh, an hour and a half away or 45 minutes? Dependent on and Yeah, no, an hour and a half away. Yeah. So, uh, yes, th they would be going giving energy to the, to the old timers who, who used to come to the, the old center four years ago, what's called the car center, and they would give energy down there, but the ashramites an hour and a half away didn't usually follow. So, yeah, we were, we were doing the satsangs or Sunday services up at the ashram. Uh, so, yeah, there were often two, two Sunday services going at the same time. Cafe also? Not this time. Uh, in August, I was asked to come and give a lot of energy at the new cafe. But this time, I only went maybe three times in the whole six months, just kind of to, to fill in when somebody had, was getting 
burnt out and tired from going two or three times a week, I, I went and helped out a few times. But that's it, because basically they asked us, be an anchor at the ashram. That's what they, that's what they knew they like needed. Sounds like you were doing at least 150 things at the same time. <laughs> <laughs> more, than, more than we thought we were going to be doing when we got on the plane to go over there. It's true. Yeah. But it was, it was great fun, too. We never did the Festival of Light. Um, we were told that the festival gets done from time to time in India, but we never witnessed one when we were there. We did go up and spend a week up in, uh, not a week, a long weekend up in Delhi with uh, Keshava and Daya, and uh, they do more of that, I think, than, than the new works down in the south uh, are doing. Um, they, they look a little bit more, it's a mature center. It's been there 15 years, I think, almost. And uh, they look a lot more like we do here. Uh, uh, but the, the newer centers are having to be, or choosing to be, too, a, a little more experimental in seeing what's going to work to, to draw people to this path where we are. And they don't always choose all the same forms all the time. Although, you know, the most popular thing uh, there in, uh, in the, the Mumbai center was Friday night purification. People just flocked to it. They loved it. Long meditation and purification. Why? Yeah. yeah, it was a long meditation around the purification in the middle. Why, why do you think people were, were drawn to that? Any, I any think guess? It's, it's familiar, you know. Um, coming up and offering something into the fire and receiving the blessing of the guru, it's part of their tradition. They grew up mm. with that. So that's very normal. Um, we got to do a lot about appreciating Christ while we were there because that's, that's the piece. Um, I think they're really starting to get it. It's a slow moving, I think, thing where uh, seeing that it, you know, Master brought both. He wanted to show both. He wanted to focus on the life of Christ and the Gita. So it's happening slowly. But to actually say now everybody's going to love the festival. So it's trickling in, I think. You know, we use a lot of quotes in everything that we did. Um, of course, Christmas is beloved. And there are a lot of people in the congregation. It's not unusual at Ananda. Uh, there are a lot of people who went to Catholic school. So there are a lot of Christians who Even have... Even though they were raised Hindu. ...who have an appreciation already for the saints. And so there's, there's little inroads that are happening. But... Yeah, when and if they will actually appreciate a whole festival, will it have to be shortened for them? It's, I think these are all still questions that I think people are landing. It's like they're in a foreign land, really, literally, although Shurja grew up sort of in India. He's as Western as Eastern, um, most of us would say. Um, but you know, how do you, how do you uh, give them something that they can really really absorb. So they love meditating, and they meditate long. So there are long meditations, which is, can't say anything bad about that. Um, so long meditations are popular. Chanting is very popular. They really chant with all their hearts. They are just so totally into it. Whether they're actually mouthing it or saying it, or they're just tuning into the vibration of it while it's going on, they are definitely loving the chanting. Chanting, meditation, purification. The other thing that we did do every week, Five almost every months. week, was uh, the arati at the altar that and piece, the yeah. blessing of light. The, yeah. They loved that, too. So they love ritual. You know, so anything that looked like a ritual, they, they were into it, and they'd line up. And... Yeah, there's a question a little, you know, we learned this. Daya was actually helpful when we visited with her. She said, you know, I forgot for years, I sort of didn't really realize, this is a foreign language for them. We're speaking in English. This is not their native tongue. They may have gone to school and learned English, but their mother mostly spoke Hindu to them. And there's something about getting one's spiritual teachings in the native tongue that's very powerful there. So maybe when the festival is uh, translated into Hindi, I, I don't know what it will be. But And one of the major mm -hmm. ministries throughout India is the Hindi ministry. And we, we know we had very little experience with it or about it, because it's kind of going on as a whole parallel track, and it's not 
it's not what's happening at most of the established teaching centers around in the big metropolitan cities in India, but there's a there's an online ministry for people outside the major metros who don't have a teaching center to come to, and that's usually in Hindi, and by volunteers from the congregations who take that on. And it's 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 a big deal. It's a big, it's as big as as the uh, you know the uh, online teaching that happens out of the expanding light. It's as bigger bigger than that. Um, yeah, it's huge. The online presence and how many Kriyabans are coming through that is just off the charts, really. And you know, for us who love the spiritual community aspect, um, I feel like Mumbai is kind of a sister city to Palo Alto in a way. We kind of they have city people coming and they have people trying to live together, and it's sort of we know the preciousness of that, and so you know, it, it's a definitely a cause to celebrate. And also, concurrently, people are teaching in Hindi and people are traveling out and centers, you know, groups are starting and new centers are popping up in neighborhoods. So it's spreading. I mean, it is, you know, we heard forever, this work will spread like wildfire. You know, we heard it about spiritual community and that is not spreading like wildfire yet in India, but the teachings of Paramahansa Yogananda through yoga and Kriya Yoga are Although, spreading. about community, you know, we tried, we were, we were some of the, the, the founders that tried to create rural community in, in Pune, or outside of Pune, uh, years ago. And it, it failed, it didn't catch, even though there are now 40 buildings out there that are mostly unused, uh, including Swami's house. Swami's house is being used. Uh, and there's a, there's a few rooms that are being used for retreat, but mostly it fit, the, the community failed and didn't ever catch on. Uh, but um, what we're discovering in kind of the grassroots experience in India is that Indians didn't want to go back to the countryside. Their grandfathers and grandmothers made a very big effort to get out of the countryside to get to the cities. And so what, what seems to be the interest and the, and the mood of Indian devotees is let's get together in the cities in nice apartment buildings that surround the central worship spot. So that's why we, we called that building down there that we could all see from our windows the ashram. But we lived in apartments all around that. And that same thing's happening in Pune. They have 15 or, or so residents within four or five minute walking distance of where they were always gathering. They've got a brand new center there that we'll see how that, how that uh, evolves, which is maybe eight minutes walk away from where they all live. But I think the, we thought, we Americans thought, that how uh, ashram, how community was going to spread in other parts of the world was it was going to look like Ananda village in rural areas all spread out real low. And I don't think that's the model that's going to happen in India right now. At least those two metros. Yeah. Are, are showing a very different trend and a very different model kind of bubbling up from grassroots. So we'll see. See how that. Your wives and our family, or are they just individuals? Ask, ask a little more about that. What, I mean, like what, what do you mean? Moms and dads and children? Yeah, one thing about community is that they're so family oriented that living in community away from the family is hard for them. Ah. You know, maybe because it's a metropolitan area and people have already often left their family home in order to be there, there's less of that. You know, there are moms, dads, and children as part of the congregation, and but they live their own separate lives and they'll visit grandma on, you know, so the, the multi-generational one big house, um, we don't see that with the devotees. Uh, Although many okay. of our many of the people from our residential ashram tend to go home to see mom, some often every week, so they travel two two and a half hours to go spend a day or two with mom yeah. on their on their weekly off, and then they come back to the ashram. So, so it's important. Yeah, they're, they're, yeah, they're important relationships, but they don't seem to have to glom together in this metropolitan mix of people that and mix of cultures too. I mean, yeah. the the villages in India are very. Uh, homogenous, uh, and you know you've got just Hindus in this village, and this village will be just Muslims, and this village will be just Sikhs. But in the cities, they're all mixed together. 
Uh, so it's a, it's a different feel there. You know, and things, you know, the, the commerce and the, uh, I mean, it's the financial hub. It's Bollywood hub. It's tech, like a lot of other cities are. But so this brings people of lots of different cultures to work in the same place. So place of work has taken people away from always living with mom and dad. It's just becoming more Western, too, in terms of values and dress and, you know, for good in some ways. Uh, many ways, <laughs> and some ways, you know, you kind of think they had had it better before, but um, but uh, yeah, Terry? it's not in the way. Uh, how many, it, demographic wise or religion wise, how many folks in your um, who are joining Ananda? Would you say what percent are Hindu? What percent were Sikh or were Muslim or were with some other group? Is do you have a sense of where, uh, what all your people I are? I think what you were saying is how many are Hindus and how many are other, other religious yeah, groups? Yeah, yeah. Um, we're seeing almost entirely Hindus, a few Sikhs, uh, just a handful a of Muslims. A couple of Muslims who come to learn to meditate. Um, that's, that's about it, yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So, so, what does Sunday service, what is the flow like at Sunday service when you would give that without the festival? Yeah. So pray, chant, meditate, um, discourse, RT, blessing, sometimes a fire ceremony. They only do an hour, not an hour and a half. Um, we brought in readings more. We come from a great great culture that involves a lot of people, which I think is something they're just now feeling safe about because they had new people and, you know, you have to trust your people enough. So to do a reading. You mean like from whispers, a whispers or, from, or um, rays yeah, or something like that? Ray, uh, yeah. whispers. We, we would lean into rays. We wouldn't read the whole rays necessarily, but we'd speak on the topic of the rays and maybe put a few quotes in there. So we sort of like to be doing what everybody else around the world at Ananda was doing, because that's how we were raised, and it was just a feeling of unity to be focusing there. Um, but often it's whatever the inspiration is, is the topic of the day, and they, the, the discourse uh, talk, whatever is on that. And then there's sats, their satsang afterward. They love to be together, and this is really building community. They mean, you know, people, roll their eyes a bit, but coming together for food is something they really enjoy doing. So somebody will bring some prasad, they'll call it a prasad, but it ends up being lunch. You know, everybody, <laughs> no bagels, no bagels, no bagels, you know, but, uh, you know, uh, papadams and uh, paratas and, you know, <laughs> the South Indian foods that people love. They love their food. Everybody loves their food, and they love to share it with one another. So that's really... That builds family and builds community. And almost Very nobody leaves there. at the end of the uh, sermon. Yeah. They, yeah. they they want to have out. that next half hour together. I mean, it's like it's it's like if everyone from the from the sanctuary went out to the patio and and did you know did that half hour afterwards. That happened every week for us. Now we didn't have 70, 80 people. We seldom. Well, we did occasion once in a while, but that was unusual. They just had had an event this last uh, Saturday and Sunday that drew... 108, 90 oh, in present. 90 and online. 50. Yeah, 90, 90 online and 58 or something. So sometimes they have a big a big turnout okay. for, for special things. This was on the chakras. And, uh, but yeah, uh, but almost everybody who came to the sermon and, and, and sat through that wanted to be there for that next half hour, just to, just to be with each other, not necessarily to talk to... The, the sermon giver just to be with each other. That's, yeah, community, the community feeling was big there. And something that started in Gurgaon way back in the early days and continues now, Dai's been doing it and I don't know about the other centers, but traffic is, is people work six days a week, traffic is heavy duty. So if they come, then they do the satsang, you do this, then they take their level one class, or they take their level two class, they take their this class, they take their that class and also have the satsang and the counseling and the visiting. So Sunday is the day, you know, and then Friday nights, other things happen, and people who live closer far come as they are able, but... But the big crowds are Sunday. 
the, the and they, they stay for and whatever. They would rather because they travel so far. They would rather stay three, four hours than just come for an hour and leave again. They traveled an hour and a half through something, so they'd like to stay. So that's part of the visit time. Two more questions. One in the back row there. I get this feeling that Master is looking at this big Bollywood sign and feeling so at home <laughs> since the big Hollywood sign was behind where he was and yeah. where he thought the center was in the United States, yeah. you know, or, or should be. Hmm. And it kind of feels like that in Mumbai. Yeah, it's, it's kind of a fluke, I think. I, I, oh, well, it was a fluke. We didn't, I don't think Sergio Narayani or, or anyone else knew that by moving up to this northern suburb right across a, 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 a you know, a, Hundreds, hundreds of, of uh, feet across of, of water before uh, away from the, the city itself. I don't think they knew that they were going to be in the middle of, of Bollywood. Uh, they didn't move there for that reason. But Master may have known. Who knows? I mean, yeah. all these script writers. Who write about oh, yeah. And you know, it's, it's an amazing resource. And I I'm, think there's something in common there. Master said one of the reasons he felt Hollywood was a good place to be is that. People were ready to create dreams, new realities. They came there thinking, what's possible? What can we make up? What can we do? And that kind of spirit, I think, is also in the, the Bollywood industry. Ever is. since Asha was there months ago, um, probably five months ago, uh, there's one, one, of, one of these men who's a scriptwriter has been talking uh, quite a bit about, I really want to tell the story of, of, uh, uh, of the court case. I want, I want to figure out how to do that. And I, I keep saying, well, go talk to Asha. Go, go call Asha. Write Asha. So we'll see. We'll see what comes of it. Never know. That, that leads to uh, another question I had. Didn't want to, um, I don't want to throw a wrench at things, but no. um, is there any, any uh, crossing over between YSS and Ananda in India? Is there any connection, any communication, any? Uh, no, no communication that I know of. There is, however, um, uh, a number of people that come to Ananda who have had experience in YSS. And not all of it is negative. Some of it is, was just fine. They, they loved meditating with YSS. Yeah. Well, I mean, Shanti mentioned and, uh, when uh, she and Saganesh and Lakshmi were there, uh, being up there and encountering a group. and. Having everything be totally uh, uh, no 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 walls, no barriers at all. I, I think there are still barriers. We certainly heard of people who mentioned they were attending Ananda as they went to some YSS thing, and there were people that you know got got a little pissy about it. So uh, it's not that there are no barriers, but I think there's a there. I think there's more fluidity perhaps there than. We tend to experience if we go to Encinitas or we go to Mother Center. Yeah, uh, there were a lot of people. Who, there are a lot of people in the congregations of YSS who really haven't heard of the problems. It's more like the center leaders of YSS who know there are problems. <laughs> well, we're get, it's getting we? a little late. Did you yeah, want to do one more thing? Yes. Okay, to close out. Okay, so this is our close. And this is one of my favorite ones since. It is around another round of the day I landed on the planet. I thought I would get to do this. And I think it applies to all of us. And it also applies to all the souls in, in Mumbai who are making this work their own and diving in, finding the joy and the divine friendship and um, the divine love. So this is Master's I Was Made for Thee. I was made for thee alone. I was made for dropping flowers of devotion gently at thy feet on the altar of the morning. My hands were made to serve thee willingly, to remain folded in adoration, waiting for thy coming, and when thou comest, to bathe thy feet with my tears. My voice was made to sing thy glory. My feet were made to seek thy temples everywhere. My eyes were made a chalice to hold thy burning love and the wisdom falling from thy nature's hands. 
My ears were made to catch the music of thy footsteps echoing through the halls of space and to hear thine divine melodies flowing through all heart tracks of devotion. My lips were made to breathe forth thy praises and thine intoxicating inspirations. My love was made to throw incandescent searchlight flames to find thee hidden in the forest of my desires. My heart was made to respond to thy call alone. My soul was made to be the channel through which thy love might flow uninterruptedly into all thirsty souls. And I just want to end with all of us sending out alms to Master's expanding work in India, Mumbai, to our family there, Narayani Shurjo, all the devotees, and throughout India. Coming in, help letting us share with you about our adventures and experiences. Woo! Before we all part, we ask.